You're listening to the Audacious Church Podcast. We know this is a great investment into your life. So tune in, listen up, and stay focused. For any more information, visit us online, audaciouschurch.com. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another Audacious Leadership Leadership Podcast. Podcast. Oh, that was good. Well done. Thanks. Many rehearsals have gone into (laughs) such an intro. (laughs) Great to see everybody. We cannot wait to get into our next uh, podcast. Yeah, absolutely. This is a great sign. You've created some space in your busy life to invest into yourself and you are your greatest investment. So well done. So previously, in a previous episode of Audacious Leadership Podcast, we were talking about the need to use this season as a, as a time of getting rid of all the things that we don't need and um, that are going to hinder our growth. So we were talking about the the process of decluttering. And when we declutter and you get rid of all that stuff you don't need, then what you actually find is what is of value. And that is the word of God for our spirits. Yeah. So we've done, a, I guess, in some ways done like a little treasure hunt mm-hmm. for, uh, since the last episode, doing different things to declutter. That's right. Get rid of old negative mindsets. Yeah, focusing on the truth of the word, uh, replacing one thought with another. Absolutely. And we hope you're getting on with that. We don't say that's going to finish now. We're, d- we're on to something else that's going to continue right through our podcast. Yeah, absolutely. So in this episode, kind of stepping on from that, but in the same vein, uh, we really want to talk about waking up the spiritual giant. Wake up. The Bible says in Acts chapter 13, speaking about David, it says, Now David had served God's purposes in his own generation. Then he fell asleep and he was buried with his ancestors. The point being here that he served the purposes of God and then he fell asleep. Because the reality is, you know, with the routine of life and busyness of life and all the crazy stuff that's going on, even though we're not physically sleeping, we can be asleep to God? Yeah, we can kind of have our senses dulled by distractions, by busyness, by routine responsibilities and just getting up, doing our day, going to bed, getting up, doing our day, going to bed. What this season's all about is about getting rid of stuff that we don't need so that we can actually bring our sensitivity to God to a a new level, a fresh level. Yeah, here's the thing, guys. No one knows they're asleep while they're asleep. Exactly. You're not lying there consciously thinking, this is a great sleep. I mean, come on, this is one of the best sleeps I've ever had. Wonder how long it is till I have to get up. Hope it's not for too much longer. But it's about this time. No, we don't do that. The only way you know you've been asleep is when somebody or something wakes you up. Exactly. Like an alarm clock. Yes. And so maybe these podcasts over these next few episodes, this will be like the sound of an alarm clock. Now, I guess nobody really likes the sound of an alarm clock, but um, thank God for them. That's right. Thank God for the things in our lives that wake us up, and that That's is right. exactly what this um, this is all about. What it does is it alerts us to the fact that we need to do something. And uh, there's a scripture in 2 Timothy 1.6 where Paul is writing to the young leader, Timothy, And basically he says, for this reason, I remind you to fan into flame the gift of God, which is in you through the laying on of my hands. And we know that when the Holy Spirit came upon the the disciples and all the followers of Jesus up in, in the upper room, that it looked like tongues of fire. And so this, this sense of waking up, this sense of becoming alert to what we need to do is basically to stoke that flame of the Holy Spirit um, inside each of our lives. And flames, when they're unattended or when we take the eye off it, um, they seem to die down and they lose their, their intensity. And what they need is fuel. And so what we're doing is stoking that flame so we make sure that it's nice and white hot. Yeah, in the New Testament, it says, don't put out the Spirit's fire. 
So whether whether we're going with the waking the spiritual giant or stoking the fire of the spirit or plugging the leaky vessel, like we could go all day with these illustrations, but the reality is we need to do something. Leaders don't just sit there and allow life to happen, a lot, just that, um, but we take responsibility. Um, don't don't get into playing the blame game. I guess that's easy. It's not my fault I fell asleep or, you know, it's just this environment or whatever. Leader- or we expect God to do it all. Sure. You know, he's going to come and he's going to do the stoking. Yeah. But actually, um, we know that that's our responsibility. Yeah, it requires something from us. Um, just because something isn't your fault doesn't mean it isn't your responsibility. Whoa. You can keep that. You can take that to the bank. <laughs> So we're going to um, look at four things. We're going to get practical. Look at four spiritual disciplines, if you like, that as leaders we need to be doing um, to wake up the spiritual giant, to stoke the fire of the spirit, to fill to overflowing. That's right. And thank God we do have something that we can do. We know that that we've got those resources. So the first one that we're going to look into in that is meditation. So that's the one that we were talking about last time, when we get rid of our negative mindsets or we identify what they are and we find a truth in God's word that counters that mindset. So if it's about unworthiness, then we find the scripture that talks about how we are accepted and approved by God through Jesus. And then with that, we don't just go, oh, thanks, Lord think I'll write that down, put it in my pocket and never look at it again. No, we we say, okay, this is the truth that God wants me to know um, in my innermost being. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to make it my focus. I'm going to look at it. I'm going to contemplate it. I'm going to spend my quiet times with the Lord focusing on it, allowing God to speak that truth into my spirit over and over again. With meditation, it's not about what you say. It's about what God says. And so what we do is we take that truth into God's presence and we allow him to speak those truths into our spirit and we meditate on it for a long period of time, however much you deem. We talked about maybe five minutes, 10 minutes, half an hour, one hour, but to make that part of our routine, that's one way that we can stoke up the fan. You know what I'm saying. Yeah, I think we, we, we definitely get what you Flame, bigger, hotter. <laughs> Giant, wake up. <laughs> um, yeah, a few practical things, though, just on meditation, just um, just to help you, because I can almost uh, imagine the sort of cloud coming over as people think, I don't know if I can do that. Yeah. Um, meditation is not passive, it's active. We said that in the last episode. It's uh, It literally means to engage in thought, which is not passive, because no. it's making a choice. I will choose to think about. This, I will, will, what you're making a choice is that in choosing to think about the truth, engaging with the truth, you're actually making it impossible to think about something else. Yeah. So for me, um, rather than sitting cross-legged, you know, on my bed or lying on the couch, which would be quite sleep inducing, I tend to um, go outside. I tend to go for a run and not just, you know, because I want to keep fit, but I'm maximizing that time by saying, like, literally before I leave the house, I'll say, okay, this is what I'm going to think about for the next 30 minutes. I know that I'm going to do, you know, 15K in 30 minutes. No chance. Not really. Um, But I know I'm going to be out for about 30 minutes, and I, without any discipline, I would just think about whatever or I would listen to music or whatever. So on these occasions, I go, okay, for the next 30 minutes, I'm going to think about, and then I'll have something that I've chosen. Mm. And then I just sort of try and my best to keep that at the forefront of my mind while I'm running. Yeah, and that's a really good shout, actually. You can do that. But I heard um, one of my friends said that they have recorded their voice um, reading that scripture, and then you can just do it on loop, you know, find a way where you can actually maybe... Just listen to your voice saying that scripture. You can do that while you're running, walking, you know, washing the dishes. You can do whatever. Yeah, another thing is just um, there's a difference between silent and still. I think we all, not all, some of us freak out at the notion of silence. Like it's silence equals nothing. 
So if it's silent, nothing's happening. You know, in a conversation, we don't like silence, so we fill it in. Um, you know, it doesn't. It's not a great atmosphere when it's silent. You know, if heaven is silent, that means you know God doesn't love us. But stillness is different because it gives purpose to the silence. Absolutely. So. If, it, you know, for example, if you're praying and you're like, heaven is silent, maybe think about it this way, heaven is still. And in that stillness, there's there's purpose. So yes. it's, it's maybe semantics, I don't know, but it just seems like that nuance um, <clears throat> helps us with the, um, I don't know if it's a British thing, but we just like freak out at silence. No, somebody said silence is loud. And that's true because it's really uncomfortable yeah. and all your maybe negative thoughts come to the uh, forefront, all the stuff that you're worrying about, all the stuff that, you know, maybe makes you feel uncomfortable, maybe thoughts about the past and thoughts about the present, worries about the future. But taking that moment to say, you know what, I'm going to choose to focus on what is true and what God is speaking to me is probably one of the most powerful things that we can do as Christians. Um, and I think the power lies in the fact that we're engaging our minds, we're focusing on the truth, we're focusing on the Lord, and we are speaking. It's almost like we've got to bring our mind into, into submission, bring our body into submission and say, I will, I'm going to do this, even though it's uncomfortable, even though it's hard work, even though I can't really see the benefit straight away, I'm still going to make this a priority in my life. Absolutely. So we're waking up the spiritual giant. First thing that we're saying, this is a great discipline to uh, build into your life in these next few weeks and months. Number one is meditation. And number two is prayer. And prayer, uh, prayer you know, comes in all sorts of forms. We can pray our requests to God. Um, it talks about in Philippians, it talks about being anxious for nothing, but bringing your requests and your supplications, the things that you need, the things that, you, that you're that you desperate for God to move in to the Lord. And then it talks about the peace of God Absolutely. that surpasses knowledge, you know, will guard your heart and your mind in Christ Jesus. So we know that there are different types of prayer. We know we've got the Lord's prayer. We've got Jabez's prayer. We've got so many ways that we can pray, but the main thing is that we are communicating with God and allowing God to have space to communicate back to us. But it's a powerful thing. In Matthew 6, when um, when Jesus is talking to his disciples about how to pray and then he goes into the Lord's Prayer, he also says prior um, to that passage, he says, when you pray. So it's not an if or, you know, if you've got time, it'd be great. Um, if you like prayer, it would be great. Oh, yeah. There's this idea that, like, there's certain people who are like the prayer monitors. Yeah. In in church or in, in, I don't know, some kind of small group scenario. It's like, oh, yeah, they're the prayer guy. They're the prayers. And, like, they must have some kind of special anointing. And I guess there is an, a ministry of intercession. But what we're talking about here is 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 com. I'm thinking of com not community, co uh, communication, uh, being commune. What does that mean? Communing with God. Commune. <laughs> Here's the articulate one. Communing with God. That's what we're talking about. So don't be thinking, you know, it's not for me or, it's, you know, it's not my call. Mm. Because as so just said, it's uh, Jesus said when you pray. That's right. And even using the Psalms, Psalms, if you're thinking, I don't know. The Psalms, David is is those are prayers. You know, this is really hard, Lord. Um, you know, the wicked are prospering. I don't really know what's going on. My tears have been my food day and night. Um, but yet, will I trust in you? And just maybe uh, praying through some of David's uh, Psalms would be would be where to start. The fact is, the Lord is waiting for us to talk to Him and to pour out our heart before Him. He loves it when we do that, because he loves to pour back into us um, his hope and his faith. But I really encourage all of our leaders to use the word as a basis for your prayer. Absolutely. Always use truth, because although there is space for us to 
to be honest before God and to really, you know, complain and, and you know, have sorrow and, and rant even and rave before the Lord, it's not until we actually focus on what God says and the truth that we can have a, an actual uh, download from heaven where we can actually bring his presence and his spirit into our lives. So I think in all of this, the word of God is paramount. The word of God is is the, probably one of the most important things. And I'm going to tell you why. Because the Bible says that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. We live by faith and not by what we see with our natural eyes. And in stoking the flame, stoking up the spirit of God within us, it comes by faith. And when we base our lives on the word of God, when we walk by the truth of his word, when we meditate on the truth, when we pray according to his truth, then faith can start to stir up in our in our hearts and in our spirits. Yeah, absolutely. I wonder if we move on to the third discipline because that really is study or uh, studying the word of God. So we've got meditation, which is engaging in thought, choosing what you're going to think about. And we're saying choose to think about truth. We've said prayer, but <clears throat> we said or suggested using the word of God to help you pray. Psalm 51, David says, you know, creating me a clean heart, renewing me a steadfast spirit. I've lost count of the number of times I've actually written out Psalm 51 in my journal because I've just come to that place of repentance. I've come to that place of just want to renew so true. my love for God and, and just honoring God. And so really what flows naturally for number three is study the word of God, meditate, pray, and study. Absolutely. The, um, the word of God is our foundation. It's where we find out who God is, um, what he is like, um, how he communicates with his people, what his values are, um, what the purpose for the church is. And um, we learn about our sonship and what it is to be a child of God, what is ours as a result. If we do not study and if we do not immerse ourselves with the truth of God's word, um, we don't have the information that we need to educate ourselves on how we're to live our daily lives because we're not natural people. We're supernatural people basing our lives on a living word. It's not just ancient texts. It's a living word that's able to bring transformation to our hearts and minds that's why it says in, in Romans, it says, be transformed by the renewing of your mind. How do we renew our mind? By letting the word wash us. That's what, The Bible talks about that. It talks about the word washing us. It also talks about the word being our weapon, our sword, the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God, as it says in um, Ephesians 6. So we cannot underestimate the power of the word. And this is the season to take our study or our understanding to another level. Absolutely. And this is not just about leading yourself, but you're listening to this because in some context, you lead others. And if in our leadership of others, all we've got to draw on is our own ideas, our own thoughts, our own experience, although they may be of some value, what we need to be doing when people... Uh, come to us for leadership in some context is we need to point them to the word because you know the bible has something to say on any issue anyone is facing i'm not suggesting that leadership is all crisis management but what i'm saying is is that you know we don't necessarily if we don't do this we feel like if someone's coming to us for leadership but we've got nothing in the cupboard metaphorically speaking, what we do is we pass them up the chain of command and we give them to the leader above us and they give them to the leader above us. And before you know it, we've got a huge queue for one, you know, um, oracle, you know, one expert, one, you know, 
spiritual person. Yeah, some counselor or some trained in this area. Mm. But in actual fact, what we need is to get a grasp of what the word says so that when, when people come to us for leadership, we can say, hey, let's go to the word together. That's let's right. find out what the word says. The Bible says, uh, as Soph already mentioned in Philippians, don't worry about anything, but pray about everything. So if someone's worried and they come to you for leadership, don't try and like reassure their worry. Don't worry. It's all going to be fine. Just say, hey, let's look what the Bible says about worry. It says don't. But instead pray. So we're going to pray. And then your peace of God will come and guard your heart and mind. I mean, you don't need to be an expert to do that. That's you exactly. just have to go to the word. And I think part of our um, being a child of God is that God gives us food to make us strong and to, um, you know, to so that we embody who he is and we're an accurate representation of who he is on the planet. Jesus said that the, the word of God is like bread. It's not just, like we said, ancient texts, feel good factor, but it actually nurtures our body and it feeds us. And so if you're feeling a little bit dry or a little bit emaciated or your faith is low or your hope is a little bit on the, um, on the, the low register, then word getting into the word, eating the word, digesting the word, meditating on the word, worshipping the word, praying. praying the word, listening to the word. This is the way that we build ourselves up. Well, okay, so we've got one last discipline oh, before we close. Oh, one thing that we can also mention about prayer is that the Lord's given us a um, heavenly language. Absolutely. We don't talk enough about that. Speaking in our heavenly language... As speaking in tongues. It, speaking in tongues. Um, the Bible says, build us up. So that's a form of prayer. If you think, yeah, my prayer, my prayer life's a bit samey, samey. Why don't you take your time speaking in tongues or in, in your heavenly language that bypasses your mind and speaks directly to the Spirit of God and He can speak directly to you. Take it to another level. Say, maybe I'm going to speak in tongues in the shower. I know I do that frequently, or I'm going to speak in tongues when I'm driving in the car, or I'm going to speak in tongues for two minutes. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. I was like, the challenge is like, just be as practical as a timer. Yeah. Like, because, you know, you might speak in tongues in church when the worship leader says, come on, let's pray in a heavenly language, or maybe in a prayer meeting, the leader will say, come on, we're going to pray in tongues. But probably in reality, after 30 seconds, we're kind of like, okay, we're done. What's next? Whereas the discipline of going, all right, I'm going to do this for like two minutes and you know, put a timer on. I don't think God is offended by that. Um, and yeah, let's let's do it. Yeah, and then you can increase it like you would do weights. <laughs> Absolutely. Let's do some heavy lifting, heavy lifting in the Lord. The, the, the final thing though, and this really is going to help all of you that are thinking, how am I supposed to create this the time to do this stuff? Like I don't have time to read my Bible. I don't have time to brush my teeth, mate, let alone you know, meditate and speak in tongues and pray and da, da, da. Um, so the fourth discipline is fasting. And fasting, um, it's not the only thing that it does, but actually does create, it's a sacrifice and it creates space where you can um, focus in on some of this stuff. And so for a season, you could say, I'm going to fast food or you could say, I'm going to fast like a meal and say, you know, it's not just going without eating and then, you know, oh, we might lose a bit of weight. It's more saying, what am I going to do with the time that I gain yep. um, to make it count? Exactly. So it's maybe uh, using that time for prayer instead of having lunch or instead of having breakfast. And you've got extra time there to worship, to pray, to study and to um, uh, focus on the truth of God's word. Fasting is a powerful discipline. Because just like Paul said, that an athlete has to, you know, put their body into training. That's what we're doing when we're fasting. We're actually speaking and to our body, speaking to our physical urges, speaking to the desire to be distracted, the desire to be entertained. Self-soothe. That to self-soothe, yeah. Maybe I'll just go and have a snack or maybe I'll just go and, you know, have a meal or whatever. Watch an episode. Watch of an something. episode of of this or binge watch this series. Instead of doing that, we're disciplining our minds to say no. That time that I would have spent doing that, I'm going to spend it with the Lord. Absolutely. So four 
spiritual disciplines to wake up the spiritual giant in you. Meditation, prayer, study, the word of God, and then also fasting. So the challenge off the back of this episode is to choose one or more than one, or maybe all four and say, okay, how can I build these disciplines into my life? Don't worry about, you know, the rest of your life, but let's just take the first domino. The next seven days, I'm going to, I'm going to commit to pray, or I'm going to commit to do this. Um, We're going to, send out some discussion questions as well that um, would help. This kind of content comes alive when you talk to other people about it because you've got accountability with that. Um, I don't know about you, but my thoughts are are like liquid. They kind of like lollop around in my brain. But the minute I put them into words, it just starts to crystallize to the point where it like makes sense. So, you know, talking things through really helps. This is going to be amazing. Yeah. And it's just like the gym. You may not see results or, you know, feel any holier. It's not about that. It's about bringing our spirit into a place where it takes the forefront and it it's strengthened and we're fanning into flame that part of our our being. We're looking forward to hearing all the stories about what God does in you. Remember, this is an alarm clock. Yeah. We, all, we know that you're a spiritual giant. Yes. We just want to see that woken up and brought to the table. Absolutely. Absolutely.